Hi, I'm Sabine Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Modeling Time and Thermal Responses of Thermistors or NTC Negative Temperature Coefficient Resistors. Now let me say a few words about the background. Now thermistors are nonlinear devices with lagging response. Now this presentation I am introducing an LT-SPICE compatible model that emulates both the electrical and the thermal responses of the thermistor. Now here is just a symbol of the thermistor and here we see the typical response with temperature that is how the resistance is changing with temperature. Negative temperature coefficient means that the resistance is going down and here I'm showing a time domain response in which the temperature is assumed to sort of have a step here and the resistance of course will go down but there is a lag here it's not instantaneous and this is due to thermal issues there are many ways to describe the behavior of a thermistor by an experimental equation now one of them is this uh, exponential type equation which i personally like very much it has been shown that it fits very well many many commercial units so the way it goes is the resistance at a given temperature is equal to the resistance at a reference temperature and then e to the power of beta. Beta is a constant, it's about 4000, 3000, that's the range. And here we have 1 over t, which is the temperature of, that we are looking for the resistance. And the reference temperature, which is this resistance, is in this reference temperature. Now it's important to note that all these temperatures are in Kelvin. So you have to add something like 273 degrees if you are working in degrees Celsius. Now it is very convenient to use uh, this uh, equation, this experimental equation in LT spice. All you have to do is really to define the resistance by this equation. So here I have it, R25, this is the parameter and you have to define it of course and then I'm assuming beta to be 4000 and this is 273 plus the temperature that I'm interested in and 1 over 298 which is 25 plus 273. So this is basically one to one expression that I'm just putting here to describe this resistor. Now in this uh, sort of schematics what I did I put here 1 amp so the voltage will be the resistance but note that 1 amp is really not practical you have to be aware there is a self-heating of the thermistor so you have to worry about the magnitude of the current that is passing through it I'm not dealing with this in this presentation I'm sure that uh, you'll be able to add this phenomena if you wish to the model I'm not discussing it here I'm just saying that this is done for convenience this is not practical, of course, because the thermistor will be heated by the current, something that you don't want. Now here I have just the source of the temperature. So this temperature is now inserted in this equation and that's, and that's all of it. So here we see the response. So this is the voltage across this resistor and since it's one amp, so the voltage is actually the resistance. So we see here it's 33 kilo ohms and just to, for a sanity check I've put here a cursor at 25 degrees and then we have 10 kilo ohm so it really nicely at least for this point represent the thermistor but as I've said this is a very good fitting usually and it's highly recommended. So what about the thermal aspect? Now if we have a thermistor, I'm showing you here like a bead, two wires coming in and of course if we are exposing it to some temperature, ambient temperature, then heat will be penetrating or leaving the thermistor but we have to consider the fact that the thermistor has some thermal capacity as well as there is a thermal resistance between this uh, surrounding and the inside of this thermistor. Now I'm assuming like a lump model, although it's like a leather, like a cover leather that you have to take many sections, but just to simplify things, I'm assuming just one stage. So I've put here the thermal resistance 
and the capacitance, okay? So temperature comes in here, this is the outside temperature, and here is actually the temperature that the thermistor sees inside, okay? This is what is affecting the resistance, not this. Now in steady state, of course, these two resistances are equal once the capacitor is charged or discharged. So this is a very basic way to emulate a thermal system. So here is an example of an implementation of this idea. I have here the temperature, this is the excitation, the actual surrounding environmental temperature, ambient temperature. This is the leg, the thermal leg. And now this is the thermistor, this is the equation. And I've put the thermistor in a typical divider that we use to actually measure temperature. So I have here a one volt DC coming in. There is a divider here. The thermistor resistance goes down as the temperature goes up. So this output will go up with temperature, which is kind of nice, the correct direction. And this is representing a typical application of a thermistor for sensing temperature. Okay, so I have a divider here. And, but the point is that I've put the temperature, not the actual temperature, but after passing this uh, leg network. And here is what I see. Here is the temperature. I've put here a fast transition for the on time and then a slow drop. This is the resistance of the thermistor. I've put here a log scale. And here is the output, okay? So the temperature has a step here, but of course, due to the lag of the thermal lag, uh, the response that we get at the output also has the lag here. So there's some time constant here too. So now I'm zooming on the rise time. Here the temperature going supposedly very fast. This is not, of course, uh, physically possible, but let's assume there is a step in temperature. We see here the response, this is like a RC circuit, like a exponential uh, of the output. However, this is not a linear circuit. So after passing the RC, which is the thermal part, then we have the nonlinearity of the resistance and the time constant that we see at the output may be a little bit different from the time constant of the thermal network, okay? So we can see this very nicely now by comparing the temperature here. This is the actual temperature that supposedly the thermistor sees inside, okay? This is the real temperature of the outside. This is the inside temperature, and this is the output. So I'm now comparing these two. This is obviously an RC circuit. There's no question about that. But what about this? This goes through this nonlinear resistor, so it may be changing. And indeed, if I look at this comparison, I did see here some shifting and gain adjustment of one of them in order so they'll come to the same scale because originally they are the same value. So we can compare them. I've sort of multiplied and then added some offset to this temperature after the first delay, so we'll see them in exactly the same scale. And, and what we see here, that the behavior is not exactly like a, a classical RC circuit. This one here, is, this temperature is after the RC circuit, okay? But as you can see, the output is actually faster. And this is again due to the fact that as the temperature goes up inside the thermistor, the resistance goes down, and this has the effect of sort of accelerating the process. So we see here a change in the time constant or the equivalent time constant of the response, and the same thing goes also actually at the drop, at the fall time, but as you would notice, as we go to a higher and higher resistances, the difference becomes smaller. So it's a nonlinear effect, and this is really something that you can really nicely examine by this lt spice simulation. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you have found it of interest, 
and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.